His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a telephone call from the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The UAE President offered sincere condolences and sympathy to His Majesty the King over the fallen servicemen of the task force of the Bahrain Defense Force who lost their lives as a result of an act of aggression that targeted them while performing their patriotic duties of defending the southern borders of Saudi Arabia within the Arab coalition Operation Decisive Storm and Operation Restoring Hope. The UAE president prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of those who fell in the line of duty in eternal peace and to bless their families and relatives with patience and solace. He also wished the wounded a speedy recovery. His Majesty King Hamad and President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan discussed the solid deep-rooted Bahraini-UAE relations as well as ways to further bolster bilateral cooperation across various fields to meet the aspirations of the two peoples. They affirmed that the Bahraini-UAE relations are exemplary as the two countries are bound by fraternal ties, similar visions and stances in addition to common destiny. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 90 for the year 2023, appointing a director in the office of the Special Representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, based on a proposal from the Director General of the Prime Minister's Office. Article 1. Hamad Khalid Mohammed Al Musallam shall be appointed as the Director of the Administrative Affairs and Services at the PMO. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 91 of 2023, replacing a member of the Advisory Committee of the National Qualification Framework at the Education and Training Quality Authority, based on a proposal from the Chairman of the Board of Directors of BQA. Following the recommendation of the BQA Board of Directors, Article 1, Dr. Farzana Abdullah al Muraghi shall replace Dr. Amina Mohammed Boali as the representative of the Higher Education Council and the Advisory Committee of the NQF at the BQA. The period of her term will continue until the end of her term of the, her predecessor. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also issued Edict 92 for the year 2023 amending the table attached to Edict 2 of 2017 regarding the Council of Regulating the Practice of the Engineering Professions Services Fees based on the proposal of the Minister of Works and following the Cabinet's approval. And His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 93 for the year 2023, issuing zoning and construction regulations across the Kingdom of Bahrain based on a proposal from the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. The zoning regulations for the construction across the Kingdom of Bahrain annexed to this edict shall be enforced. Article 2. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning also edicts endorsing the detailed urban zoning maps in various regions of the Kingdom. Article 3, the zoning regulations for construction stipulated by Edict 56 for the year 2022 shall be abrogated. Article 4, license applications prepared in accordance with the zoning regulations for construction across the Kingdom of Bahrain issued by Edict 28 for the year 2009 or the zoning regulations for construction across the Kingdom of Bahrain issued by Edict 56 for the year 2022 will be accepted if submitted before the 1st of December. Article 5, the concerned authorities, each in their capacity, shall implement the provisions of this edict, which takes immediate effect and shall be published in the official gazette. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, appreciated the great interest that His Majesty the King, Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, attaches to the children of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and His Majesty's keenness to provide them with comprehensive care, pay attention to their education and encourage them to raise their academic level and excellence to contribute in the progress of the nation. His Highness affirmed that the excellence of the institution's sons and daughters reflects the paternal care they receive from His Majesty the King and their achievement of the highest grades, which confirms His Majesty's keenness, follow-up and generous directives to pay attention to the quality of education and motivate the distinguished. His Highness praised the great support that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation receives from the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which had a significant impact enabling the foundation to carry out fully its humanitarian tasks in various sectors. 
This came on the occasion of His Highness's sponsorship of the 19th ceremony honoring the outstanding students, which was organized by the foundation during which outstanding students who achieved 95% or above in the academic year 2022-2023 were honored. The meetings of the Preparatory Committee as part of the Saudi-Bahraini Coordination Council chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud were held. The Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani met with his Saudi counterpart His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud who chaired the Political Coordination Committee between the two countries. The two sides reviewed their fraternal and strong relations and discussed mechanisms for developing them at the bilateral and multilateral levels within the framework of the Political Coordination Committee and ways to enhance cooperation through a number of initiatives that would advance relations in a manner that meets the aspirations of the leaderships of the two countries and achieves the interests of their people. The Preparatory Committee for the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council held its meeting co-chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and his Saudi counterpart in the presence of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Hamad Al-Malki and the Under Secretary of the National Economy at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy Osama Al-Alawi. The Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed the Kingdom's sincere condolences to the leadership and people of Bahrain and to the family of the martyrs and members of the duty force participating in Operations Restoring Hope and stationed on the southern border of Saudi Arabia and its wishes for a speedy recovery for the injured. The committee reviewed the progress of the work of the Council and its committees and the developments and preparatory work for the third Council meeting. The committee reviewed the progress of the work of the subcommittee and the initiatives that were launched during the second Council meeting as well as the list of the new initiatives to be launched during the third meeting. The two sides praised the cooperation and coordination between the Coordination Council subcommittees and their work teams and stressed the importance of continuing at this pace to achieve the common interests of the two countries and their peoples. At the end of the meeting, the minutes of the second meeting of the Political Coordination Committee and the minutes of the first meeting of the Preparatory Committee of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council were signed by the two chairmen. Tunisia has extended its condolences to the Kingdom of Bahrain on the loss of Bahraini Defense Force servicemen on the Saudi southern border. The servicemen were members of the task force participating with the Arab coalition in operations Decisive Storm and Restoring Hope. A statement issued by the Tunisian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Migration and Tunisians Abroad reaffirmed Tunisia's unwavering support to international and regional efforts meant to promote peace negotiations and achieve a political resolution to the Yemeni crisis. Pakistan has condemned the terrorist attack on the Bahrain Defense Force Task Force position on the southern border of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which resulted in deaths and injuries. The task force is part of the Arab coalition leading operation decisive storm and restoring hope. A statement by the Pakistani Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that Pakistan extends deepest condolences to the Kingdom of Bahrain, its brotherly people and families of the martyrs. Pakistan's praise for full recovery of the injured members of the Bahrain Defense Force. His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Edward, visited the British School of Bahrain campus in Hamala, during which the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Foundation, which has over 160,000 volunteers globally, hosted a prestigious event. The school was honored to welcome His Royal Highness Prince Edward, Duke of Edinburgh, for his special occasion, and together with the high-level dignitaries, they celebrated the positive impact of the award within the kingdom over the past, present, and future. The Duke met a host of students and members of the Bahraini community during his visit to BSB. The students were pleased to show His Royal Highness their leadership skills on the school's newly refurbished sports pitches alongside key activities such as their use of virtual reality in the inspired Metaverse School built to aid interaction with other students around the world. The Duke also spoke to students from St. Christopher's School and their parents about their Gold Award participation. The award, which has been running in Bahrain for nearly 30 years, currently operates in two organizations, the British School of Bahrain 
and St. Christopher's School, supporting more than 320 young people every year. The director of IAC operations at the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Foundation, Dorothy Gorman, expressed happiness at being able to celebrate the achievements of award participants and award leaders at two existing award centers. The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award operates in more than 120 countries and territories through developing transferable skills, increasing their fitness levels, cultivating a sense of adventure, and volunteering in their community. The award helps 14 to 24-year-olds to build essential skills. Around a million young people are currently completing their own unique program via hundreds of thousands of youth-focused partners and operations. His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh's uh, visit to Bahrain and especially to promote as patron the Duke of Edinburgh International Award was incredibly significant for all the schools present, uh, both those like St. Christopher's and BSB that have thriving programs, but equally uh, schools that are just starting to think about adding their own program, such as Nadine School and the min having the Minister of Education here, I know that it will certainly uh, bloom with within all of Bahrain and that will be a great thing for us to look back on in the future as schools throughout the kingdom ha have developed the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award and it all comes down to the seeds first sown here tonight. The Minister of Social Development, Osama bin Ahmed Khalaf al Asfur, headed the fourth Elderly National Committee meeting. The Minister stressed the importance of continuing achievements in support of the needs of the elderly to enhance their quality of life. He pointed out that the committee has taken great steps to improve the services provided to this category through programs and projects directed to their care. The minister emphasized the pursuit of achieving more achievements in a sustainable manner through cooperation with the relevant authorities to develop services provided to the elderly during the meeting, ways to enhance efforts to improve the situation of the elderly in the Kingdom of Bahrain were discussed, including launching more projects and initiatives in the field of serving, caring, and protecting this group in an effort to continue their contributions to development and construction. The Industry and Commerce Minister, Acting Minister of Tourism, Abdullah bin Adel Fakhro, met Shripad Yusu Naik, Indian Minister of State for Tourism and Ports, Shipping and Waterways, on the sidelines of the 43rd session of World Tourism Day held in Riyadh under the theme of Tourism and Green Investments, co-organized by the Saudi Ministry of Tourism, the World Tourism Organization. The Minister Fakhro affirmed keenness to carry on the integrated efforts in the two countries' tourism sectors. The two sides praised the growth and development of the tourism sector in the two countries, citing the remarkable increase in the number of visitors and the development of the infrastructure of tourism and travel. They highlighted the role of the promising tourism initiatives launched by Bahrain and India to support partnerships in the private tourism sector to open up tourism investment horizons, promote the two countries' tourist destinations at the regional and international levels, and provide diverse and unique tourism experiences for visitors. The minister also discussed with the Turkish Minister of Culture and Tourism, Mehmet Nuri, Nuri Ersoy, ways to enhance tourism cooperation within the framework of the two countries' keenness to strengthen their strategic partnership in the tourism sector and benefit from their common experiences, exchange expertise and develop their tourism sector. The Undersecretary for Counselor and Administrative Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Dr. Muhammad Ali Bahzad, attended the reception held by the Embassy of Indonesia on the 78th anniversary of their country's Independence Day. The Undersecretary congratulated Indonesian Ambassador to Bahrain, Ardi Hermawan, and expressed his best wishes to Indonesia and its people. Dr. Bahzad praised the Bahraini-Indonesian relations and their progress in all the fields, stressing Bahrain's keenness to boost them. So tonight is the national reception of our Independence Day. It's the 78th of Indonesian uh, Independence Day. And for the relation with Bahrain, we all established the diplomatic reason in 1976. So it's been a long time. And your embassy in Jakarta is opened in 2018, while we've been here in Manama in 2010. 
I hope that both countries are going to expand in the economic and also social cultures. We hope to open again our uh, direct flight with Gulf Air from Jakarta, Manama, Jakarta. And also we take the opportunity of using the Gulf Air for Indonesian Jama Umrah. Other than that, also for the business, for the tourism, and also the cargo going to uh, Manama direct from Jakarta. Uh, for today's event, uh, we're having a diplomatic reception in commemorating uh, the Independence Day uh, of the Republic of Indonesia uh, this year. And in today's event, uh, we're not only having a, a remarks from His Excellency Ambassador, but we are also showcasing some of uh, Indonesian products and also some of Indonesian cultures. Uh, hopefully you can enjoy tonight's event. Uh, we are here as uh, the Toyota brand and we have brought two cars which is the Fortuner and the Innova to represent this uh, amazing uh, event that we have today. And I would like to wish uh, everybody a great time and a great happy Indonesian ind anniversary. The Chief Executive Officer of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Al Ansari, opened the sixth edition of the Bahrain Dermatology Laser and Aesthetics Conference, which is organized by the BDA Health and Medical Events Company. The conference seeks to enhance the awareness efforts and raise the awareness of healthcare professionals in the field of skin disease prevention and to enable the local and international medical community to become familiar with the latest global medical practices proven by scientific evidence. BDLA is the largest and the only event of its kind in the field of dermatology, laser and aesthetics in the Kingdom of Bahrain with the participation of over 35 local and international speakers with an impressive list of delegates ranging from dermatologists, plastic surgeons, specialists and consultants both locally and regionally. Its scientific program covers medical, biological, pathological and diagnostic dermatology, hair and laser, aesthetic reconstructive plastic surgery injectable and wound caring and healing. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the Ministry of Interior and the government-related entities continued their joint efforts to intensify inspection campaigns against illegal practices in the labour market in order to preserve a competitive, fair and stable labour market. The LMRA announced it had conducted five joint inspection sessions and campaigns which resulted in registering violations related to the labour market and residency laws. The cases were referred for legal action. The Embassy of Italy in Bahrain and the Center for Culture and Research, Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, with the support of Gulf Air, inaugurated the exhibition Racconti di Moda Italiana, Tales of Italian Fashion, at Bin Matar House. The exhibition, conceived by Stefano Domenella, one of the most influential and leading experts in the fashion, continues to spread the prestige of Made in Italy throughout the world. On this occasion, Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Sheikh Ibrahim Center for Culture and Research, Sheikh Amay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, thanked the Italian Embassy in Bahrain, represented by Ambassador Paola Amadei, who has always been keen to promote the beauty of Italy. The Ambassador also thanked the Maison Catanoni for exhibiting in the Sheikh Ibrahim Center a Maison which has always left its mark in the history of international fashion. She wished the center's audience to enjoy this unique exhibition that reflects the beauty and elegance of Italian fashion. Ambassador Amadei stated that she was grateful to Sheikh Amai for having opened the doors of the Bin Matar House to the Italian fashion and its extraordinary history. She also thanked the Gattonini Fashion House and its president, Stefano Domenella, for presenting the exhibition Tales of Italian Fashion in Bahrain for the very first time. Ambassador Amadei also thanked Gulf Air, which has recently further increased direct connections with Italy for having contributed to making the event possible. It is a pleasure, a honor to host here to this beautiful exhibition Tales of Italian Fashion. Uh, I'm grateful to Sheikh Amai um, and the Sheikh Ibrim Center for this beautiful location, the Bid Matar House. We brought some beautiful pieces, pieces which comes from the archives, um, from some uh, 
Gattinoni Fashion House and some among the major Italian fashion brands. His name is Stefano Dominella, he is the honorary president of the Gattinoni Fashion House and also the president of the textile sector of Confindustria in Italy. He's very honored to be here and he wants to thank specifically Sheikha May, of course, and Ambassador Paola Madei uh, for having this long-term vision of bringing these pieces of uh, art here in, in Bahrain. Tonight holds a wonderful collaboration between Sheikh Ibrahim Center for Culture and Research and the Embassy of Italy. This exhibition comes to showcase the beauty of the Italian fashion in various stages of, uh, of lines, of forms, of years, and we're introduced to the legacy of Italian fashion here in Muharraq. I believe every piece is extremely exquisite and there's an incredible history to learn from each of the dresses on display at this museum, at this show. The President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, received a written message from the Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council of Yemen, Dr. Rashid Al Alami. The message was received by the diplomatic advisor to His Highness the President, Dr. Anwar Gargash, during his meeting with the Ambassador of Yemen, Fahad Saeed Al Minhali. During the meeting, Gargash stressed the UAE's support for all the efforts aimed at finding a mechanism for a permanent ceasefire in Yemen and starting a serious dialogue to reach a sustainable political settlement of the Yemeni crisis. He praised the great efforts made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in this regard. Kirgash stressed that the UAE stands with the Yemeni people to mitigate the repercussions of the humanitarian crisis they are facing. The Gulf Cooperation Council and the Islamic Republic of Pakistan signed a preliminary free trade agreement. The preliminary FTA was signed by the Secretary General of the GCC, Jassim Mohammed Al Bdewi, and the Minister of Commerce for Pakistan, Dr. Johar Ajaz, at the headquarters of the General Secretariat in Riyadh. Pakistan's Commerce Ministry called it a milestone in both sides' economic cooperation. The GCC also released a statement saying, the historic agreement represented an important turning point in cooperation and would contribute to growth and prosperity in a way that serves the common interests of both sides. The preliminary deal will now be followed by an internal administrative and approval process before the final agreement is signed and comes into effect. The agreement will help to maximize shares of Pakistani exports to the Saudi market once the removal of trade barriers commences under the FTA. The European Union and the United Nations affirm their commitment to working together to reach a sustainable political solution on the basis of a comprehensive dialogue between Libyans. This came during the meeting held in Brussels between the High Representative of the European Union, Joseph Perel, and the UN Envoy to Libya, Abdullah Batilli. The two parties exchanged views on the current situation in Libya and discussed how to coordinate and strengthen the political efforts to support the path towards peace and stability in Libya. The two parties also reviewed the devastating consequences of Hurricane Danielle, which recently struck areas in eastern Libya, leaving thousands dead and missing, especially in the city of Derna. <laughs> 